those of you who know me well will know I'm almost always early for stuff. Before I get started, while I wait for people to um, catch on that I'm here, just ahead of the scheduled time anyway, um, when I drive to your wedding, I will allow flat tyre time. So I will allow enough time not only to be at your ceremony about an hour before I need to, before it starts, but I will also allow an extra half hour in case I have to um, stop and change a wheel. I'm just going to give this a minute or two before I launch into it. Because I said 2 o'clock and my computer says it's only 1.59. And um, when I was a very young girl studying theatre, a very elderly director continually reminded of us that punctuality is the politeness of princes. So I get really, really stressed if I'm going to be late. So I'm not late to this. Even though I actually scheduled a reminder to tell me it was at two o'clock, it went off at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> cool. Anyway, tick, tick, tick. Okay, I'm launching. I think. Yeah, okay. I've called today's Begin With A Bang. Today I want to talk about the processional and the recessional, which are posh celebrant speak for how you get up the front and what you do at the end. Now, in a very traditional binary heterosexual wedding, tradition had this. Groom, best man, groomsman, all waiting, ready to start at the altar. And then the girls would come in, starting with the bridesmaid who was standing furthest away from the bride, she would um, walk in, take her position, then the next one until you got to the maid or matron of honour, called a matron of honour if the lady was already married, and then the bride would come in, oh, sorry no I missed a step, get the grown-ups in place, then any children, so if there were page boys they would come in and then followed by flower girls. Whoa. And that was the masking tape on the tablet coming off the computer screen. Oh, technical hitches or what? Won't happen on the day of your wedding, I'm sure. And this is because I'm using the same masking tape I had. Anywho, your page boys and flower girls have come in and then the bride comes in escorted by either her father or an adult male from her family. And you really don't have to do that. And it doesn't always work as well when there's um, when you're not in a church or chapel style building. Now, before we move on, this is the last time you're gonna hear me call them bridesmaids and groomsmen. From now on, I'm going to call them attendants. And look, not just because of inclusivity, but because these days, even if a female bride, if her best friend is a kid she's known, the boy she's known since primary school, why can't he stand beside her? If the groom's best friend is a female cousin that he's grown up with, why is that inappropriate? You know, I don't think there should be any barriers to who goes with where. On the day you get married, the people standing beside you are going to be the people you love and can trust. So don't have his female cousin and the girl next door if they're not your best friends. You want your best friends for the emotional and the practical support that your attendants are there to give you. So there are lots of other ways that you can get up the front to start your ceremony. Um, we don't have to have one of you waiting at the front for the other. But, you know, a lot of couples still choose to do that. A lot of boys don't necessarily want to make a big song and dance of things and they would prefer to be just standing there waiting and that's fine. But your attendants can come in, your attendants can come in as couples and branch off. And you can then each make an entrance, being escorted by someone important to you or not. You can come in together if you want to, if you're at your own house and you've got married together. Often that's a nice way to do it. 
parents, grandparents, other elders in your tribe can be acknowledged and thanked in other ways during the ceremony, not just by giving the bride away. Another thing I'm not real keen on. Um, excuse the rampant feminist that comes out sometimes. So yeah, attendance are optional and how you enter the ceremony space often will depend on um, the circumstances where you are. I did a wedding in a backyard last year that the couple had set up some nice chairs and a runner for an aisle, a lovely arbour, and from about nine o'clock in the morning it tipped it down and it rained and it rained and it rained. Now it wasn't a huge wedding, there were only about 15 people there. So what we did, we all went out on her back deck because there just wasn't room indoors. We all went out on her back deck and um, the bride with the baby on her hip and her fella just came and stood beside me and I called everyone to attention. I just said, right, well, this weather's not going to let up. What do you reckon we just get these two married? Round of applause, couple of cheers, and away we went. And it was lovely, and I love stuff like that. Another one I'd really like to tell you about is a wedding I did at the amphitheatre at Cedar Creek Lodges. I don't know whether you've been there or not, but it, it, it is an amphitheatre. You've got babbling brook, actually, which is really loud. You need amplification on your sound to be able to hear, be heard above the waterfall-y stuff going on behind you but beautiful rainforest setting with a stage and raped seating going up. Now, the bride and her bridesmaid, her female attendant, sorry, had planned from the get-go to make a nice entrance in the side. Um, it was one of these grooms that um, just kept changing his mind and he was going to make an entrance and then he wasn't going to make an entrance and then on the day when I arrived and he came down to, to see me and he said, Sally, I've decided I really would like to make an entrance. What should we do? So on the spot, because we we're in an amphitheater and the guests are in rake seating, I said, you wait up the top, sweetie. And we got to the point where the ceremony was going to start and I started. Good afternoon, my name is Sally Ann Thomas and I am a Commonwealth Registered Celebrant, duly authorised to solemnise marriages according to law. Today, I am here to solemnise the marriage between this bloke and that woman. So, to begin, groom and groomsmen, come on down. And they ran down the aisle high-fiving everybody like you do on The Price is Right. It was wicked sick. Um, so there's just two variations that depended very much on where we were and how people felt on the day. So think about how you want to make your entrance, whether you want something calm, traditional, something more modern, or something totally off the wall. If you decide you want to do a real, you know, all singing, all dancing, spectacular entrance, YouTube. There are dozens and dozens of really great wedding ceremony entrances by brides and grooms on YouTube. So after you've worked all that out, who's in the, who's, who, 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 who's in the bridal party, who's going to be your attendants, how you want everybody to enter, then you choose the music. Because you might need more than one song. You might want a song for the attendants. You might want a song each to come into as a couple. Or just one song for you both to come in. But it's no good saying, oh, this is our entry song. It runs for 2.67 minutes. And there's going to be about five minutes of business. So wait until you've worked all this other stuff out before you then start locking in the music. Also, practice walking to it. Don't choose a song that you can't walk into. A lot of the times, and we'll talk about rehearsals again another day, but a lot of the time the main thing at a rehearsal is teaching everybody to walk in time to the music. And you could probably do that at home. So you've chosen your music, you've worked out what you're going to do, am I going to get people to stand up? Because of course that's what used to happen. I know a lot about what happened in weddings in the 1980s in churches, because that's what happened to me. Um, so nobody could see the bride. They were all sitting in the pews. Nobody could see the bride. Um, somebody, some old lady on an organ would start playing, here comes the bride, and everybody would stand up and turn around to watch her come in. A lot of the time, they're going to have seen you pull up. 
especially if we're out of doors, they will have seen you get out of the car. What I find happens a lot is that the bridal car will pull up and that is what gets people's attention. Prior to that, everybody's just chitter chatter. They'll see the car pull up and people will go and they will watch you get out of the car and watch your attendants foof your frock. And then I have to call them back down to where we're gonna actually do the wedding ceremony to start the music for you to make your entrance. So if I've already got them there and they're seated, they've already seen you. So they don't necessarily need to stand up to get their first look. Um, and the other thing is, as a really short person, I'm here to tell you that if everybody stays sitting down, everyone can see you. If you're in the middle of the aisle and the people to your right on the aisle stand up and for me if they're anything over five foot two once they're on their feet I can't see a thing so that's one thing and the other thing is photography photographers have told me the ones I've worked with have told me they much prefer it if I can keep people in their seats because then they have unlimited range to be able to photograph you as you come in as you see each other for the first time as you take your positions as you hand your flowers over they can get photos of all of that if there aren't people standing up blocking their view. Of course it's up to you, everything's always up to you, but given the druthers, I have found that if I say nothing, people stay sitting down. They don't tend to stand up unless they're invited to in that sort of situation, and I prefer not to invite them. So, what is gonna go on in the ceremony? We will talk about another time. There's at least one, possibly two more talks on stagecraft, if you'd like to call it that, of the ceremony itself. So we've had the ceremony, it's wonderful. You've done the signing, you've come back, I've said a poem, I've given you everybody's blessing, we've stood up, we've congratulated you, everybody applauds, the music comes in. And then what happens? Again, it used to be cut and dried because you were in a building and you would walk back up the aisle together as man and wife out the back doors and then people would come flooding out behind you throwing little cut up bits of paper at you. That's another thing I'm glad we don't do. But circumstances are very different now and the other thing of course too a lot of weddings are a lot smaller than they were before the C word. So there isn't a cut and dried way to do this. It very much depends on your circumstances, on the setup and how many people are there. My amphitheatre wedding that I would talked about earlier, there wasn't really anywhere to go and they were actually having like a cocktail style reception just to the left of the stage. So we invited everybody down at the end. Please come down and congratulate our, our newlyweds. Um, I've done a wedding at a private property where um, while we were off doing the signing, the attendants handed out glasses of champagne. Now, we, the bride and groom and I were up in a gazebo that was actually up higher than where everybody else was. So we got to the end of the ceremony and I invited everybody to raise their glass to Bill and Ben and asked them, like we worked this out ahead of time, asked them to all turn around because the photographer is poised on the opposite hill and took a group shot with, I stepped out of the way, a group shot with the couple in the gazebo and all their friends facing out below them. Um, Ocean View Estates in the gazebo there. Lovely big gazebo. And my bride and groom had planned to do the grand exit to walk out past everybody that was seated and then have them follow them back up the hill and take a group shop at the top of the hill. Again, rain absolutely pelting down. The Blyde Bresso Heart had done that big long walk from the winery building down to the, the gazebo in the driving rain. I wouldn't have done it. Um, but we got to the end and of course things had to be changed on the fly. So again we um, invited everybody to remain seated please and the photographer came in and took photos under the gazebo with us all. Your photographer is a really good point of first contact to have a think about what you want to happen at the end. But it, I, I've also, you know, done weddings where the bride and groom said, no, we want to walk back up the aisle and they get to the end of the aisle and then where do they go? Because they're just at the end of the carpet. They haven't gone out of a couple of doors or anything. 
So it's always really important to work out what you're going to do so that it doesn't fall flat. Because we've created this hype, this wonderful, loving, gorgeous, funny vibe. You don't want anything to spoil that. Like another one I did, where we did all of that. And everything was going great. And then again at a private property, the relative whose property it was said, oh, can I borrow your microphone for a moment? She got on the microphone and I'm like, okay, now we've spent a lot of money and time on this garden, so please don't trample on it. If you're going to go down there, can you go around the side? And don't come in the house. We've got portalese round by... Oh, fuck. I could have um, made that sort of housekeeping announcement at the very start of the ceremony and because it, it completely sucked the energy that I'd spent an hour pushing into that crowd. I never have a problem with housekeeping for the housekeeping. Things like don't trample my roses and this is where to go to the toilet are important things for your guests to know. But it's timing. What else? Music. You're only probably going to need one tune at the end. Something that comes in with a real happy bang. But choose a couple to follow on with because there'll be a fair bit of milling around whatever happens. You don't want it to just cut off. So choose a couple of songs for that as well. If you um, do my DIY ceremony, which for the most part I, I, I've said has been limited to people who live nearby, but um, certainly at the price that it's at is only available to, to people that live nearby. But, you know, with a little bit of travel fee and a little bit of negotiation, if you want to do a DIY ceremony and save yourself a few dollars on me writing everything from scratch, that booklet has all sorts of options for you to think about for processionals and recessionals, the posh celebrant words for getting up the front and finishing up. And I think I've probably exhausted everything I had to say. I've got my talking points up on the screen which is, you know, really, I'm going to have to find out some better way than this masking tape. I told you yesterday, didn't I? I've got this ring light, right? But the head's gone all wibbly-wobbly, so um, I can't attach anything to it, but I need something at eye level that I can see, and I like the tablet because it's got bigger buttons for my bad eyesight and fat fingers. But I think this has gone okay. I think what I've had to say has been interesting. I do hope you think so too. Next week... I'm going to talk on where we all stand. I've call, I'm going to call it, I think I've put the tile up yet, but I'm going to call it Places Everybody. And we'll talk about who stands where and when. And also talk about if you are having dad or another family member bring you down the aisle. I've got a few thoughts on how we make that not seem awkward. That handover thing. So... And I've got a really clever way of incorporating that in with a first look. And we're going to talk about that next time on Tuesday the 7th, probably about lunchtime. But I've got a doctor's appointment in the morning, so I've got to work out when I'm going to be home from that. Now I've got to work out how to get back out of this. You know what? That was a heap of fun. I hope, aside from it keep falling off the computer, it was a heap of fun. Now all I've got to do is work out how to stop it. This will be fun too. How about I just hit the X and see what happens? Cheers for now. Right. Let's not hit the X.